good day and welcome to Gnarly Rat and Off the Hook. <laughs> Uh, Lori comes up with some great webinar topics uh, or, or titles, and this is a classic. So I can't wait to get started, Lori. So let, let's go ahead and get this going. We've we've tried to start out the new year with some really cool ideas, and marketing. Obviously, we want to sell stuff, and so this is what it's about today. So we're going to go directly in again. Your your hosts are Chuck and Lori, uh, and uh, here's what we're going to do: mapping. Uh, Matthew has come up with some wonderful new tools that can help you focus your marketing efforts. <clears throat> One is a mapping tool where you can actually do a geographic uh, space, geospatial view of where your people are and then connect it to something called Zip Radius, which is a special wizard that lets you pull names out of, say, mailing labels for a mailing or for email within a radius of a particular zip code. And then finally, on AceWeb, a new way to promote your courses year round, even though they might not be offered during a term. We call that marketing unscheduled classes. So Lori, you think everybody's ready? I think we're ready. ready. All right, let's get going. So gnarly, what is gnarly? Well, as surfers, <laughs> Neither Lori or I have much surf experience here, but doing something that is difficult, challenging. Well, Matthew rose to the task. And basically, I've put together a tool called Do Mapping that you can add to a report. I would probably recommend doing it out of mailing labels. <clears throat> and what that will give you is a, uh, and again, any report that has a name and address in it will work. Mailing labels is probably one of the more flexible from your query point of view. And again, what you need for a version is student manager 72A.09. So again, uh, that's the version of student manager that's required that has all the goodies in. There are a couple of files that you need in order to enable um, mapping. You've got to have these two. <clears throat> and again, they're available from the student manager resources section of your student manager organization guide on the web. I'm going to jump to that now. Uh, Lori, is the screen refresh coming on OK? Doing very well. OK, student manager resources, customer student manager resources. And we scroll to the bottom to tools. And that's where you're going to see mapping, and you're going to see zip radius, which we'll talk about in a second here. But that's where those two, uh, those two tools are, and that's where you're going to get them uh, to put them in your student manager folder. All right, so you've got those files. You run the program. After you close the preview, a browser will, map, will launch. You'll see a map, and then you have got to click the Go button uh, off the lower right of the map. When you do that, it will actually load push pins on the map. You'll get a message. And voila, you have a map with push pins showing where your people are. Now, ain't that cool? That is so <laughs> it is cool. Uh, there is a set of tools. I lost my little pointer, all the red there. Up in the upper left, you can navigate, uh, again, like most map orientations, navigate around the map. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you actually could get an aerial view, which I'm not sure what good that does you. But again, a way to see where your people are. The other thing that's cool is that if you hover over a particular a person, you can actually see. It'll tell you the name of that person who is at that map point and their street address. I mean, it's just pretty flipping cool. All right, what else we've got? Uh, and we'll, we'll show you an example of this in the reports in a second. RAD, zip radius. <laughs> I'm just finally picking up, Lori, what you're referencing here. So RAD and gnarly. This is the new tool called zip radius that you can launch again in a uh, just do it on a report. And again, uh, any report that has a zip code, uh, you add a just do it note on just ma on the mapping. You do a just after. This is a just do it. And again, you must have this table zip lat long 
which is in the download section of tools that we were at a minute ago. All right, so you've got that. And what it allows you to do is to focus in on a geographical X number of miles from a zip code to a report. Now, the cool thing is that you can combine those so that you actually have a combination of a number of miles from the location and actually a geographical view of exactly where those people are. So uh, we're going to go back now and jump to a copy of Manager and run this. I just finished the report, so I let me get out, let me get out of this here. Okay, get out of this. No. So uh, let's do the zip. Uh, let's do the mapping first. So we're going to go to mailing labels. All right, are you with me, Lori? We are. All right, mailing labels, additional reports. Uh, we're going to run all the people with a particular interest code, and we might select ACE. Now we're going to find our mapping tool, do mapping. And what we did was added a just after to call do mapping. And here's a list of names it brought out. Everybody, and you see Kansas, Ohio, they're all over the place here. Uh, when you call the program, it asks you whether you want to map the firm address or the name address. So again, if the, if the, if the report has both firm address and name address, you can, you can pick. Probably most of you will pick name address. It will bring up, show up a, uh, again, calls up Bing, brings up the map of the United States. Remember, you've got to press go to make the, the work start. And now you wait. Um, one little warning here, if you have a large database, this could take a while because it actually has to grab an address, go into the web form, map up the, the zip code to the latitude and longitude. You even have a few flyers that might show in Europe. The reason for that is that if you've got an address that's a post office box, it doesn't know what to do sometimes. And you may get a few outliers that are really, they're really off the map. So when you're done, finish creating. And you've got now a map. I'm going to zoom out to kind of see where we are. So here you see the maps. Now again, hover over the map, Joseph Smith. Whereas we could find Lori, we'll see Greg Nelson, Ron Davis. And again, that is the map element. So Lori, any questions so far? No, we're doing pretty well, except to tell people that that screen flashing, the first time I saw it made me really nervous. <laughs> yeah, be patient. It will get done, and you have to wait until it says, finish creating push pins. And then you can navigate with the map. All right, let's run it now for zip radius. So this will show you the other tool, the zip radius tool. We're going to do the same thing, people with an interest code, beginning with ACE, all our ACE people. And now we're going to run the zip radius tool. And so you'll see the little tool it brings up. It says, enter the zip code. Well, if you know the zip code, you can just enter it. 66502, and it tells you that is Manhattan, Kansas. Now, if you want to do a zip code, and let's say 75 miles, but let's say that you wanted to do a zip code of Marion, Ohio, or Kansas City, Kansas, but you don't know the zip, you don't know an exact zip, an exact zip code. If you leave the code blank and tab out, it'll ask if you want to look up a zip by city and state. So we say yes. And now you have basically the zip code lookup tool that you do when you're adding new zip codes to name records. Kansas City, Kansas. And that brings you up the zip code. All right, I'm going to go back to Manhattan because we have more people here. 66503. Whoa, I see. I, Type 66503, Manhattan, Kansas, 75 miles. OK, we're ready to go. Laura, are you ready? We're ready. Ready. Let's do it. Continue. 
So now it's going to pull, again, based on that lat long, and again, you guys that aren't Kansas natives, but again, Manhattan, Manhattan, McFarland's close in, Westmoreland's close in, Topeka's within the range, Blaine, Dubois, Nebraska, actually my hometown, is within 75 miles of Manhattan, Kansas. So uh, that is the zip radius. OK, this is the cool part. Now we want to do both. We're going to run all the ACE people, but we want to map them so we actually see where those people live. So we're going to do the combo, zip radius and do mapping, 665503, 75 miles, continue. Again, we get the list, close the door, map the names, get the map, say go. This should take a little quicker because we're not dealing with as many names. Bada bang, bada bing, bada bing. Finish creating. So now we should be able to zoom out and see that within 75 miles of Manhattan, we've got all these names. And we can actually, of course, zoom in to Manhattan. Let's get over to Manhattan. Come on, get over. I think I can just grab this and move it over. Yep, there you go. So it shows us the people. Jeannie. Uh, there's Tom Jones, who's over here. That's Matthew at the home office, Carrie down in downtown. But again, that is the mapping tool. So, all right, any immediate questions, Lori? Can we print the map? Print the map. There is not a print option per se. What you would need to do is to do a screen dump or a screen capture uh, if you want to print that map. Uh, because it's interactive, uh, it's really intended for you to kind of work with, but it, you, you can do a screen grab with the screen capture tool and get the printing. All right, let me get out of this and let's move on to the next element here, which is off the hook. <laughs> and again, displaying unscheduled courses on the web. Now, what that allows you to do with AceWeb is to be able to show classes that are not currently scheduled. In other words, you might have a class that you run only one term a year, and people go to the website, look for it, and say, hey, Aceware University is not offering this one fall class, or this one class. I'll go look somewhere else. Well, you want them to know that whereas it might not be scheduled now, you could have it, and people can, can ask to be on the mailing list. And so what basically you get with Aceweb is a link called not currently scheduled. Now, when you do that, it'll show the classes. You can have a reference on there, like maybe when it's offered, if it is like an in-house class only. Uh, again, it's a way for you to promote that class. And then, again, when they click on that, they have two options. You can indicate that this is a class that is regularly scheduled, and you can ask to get a notification when it's next available. Now, now what happens on that is that it adds a interest code based on the catalog code of the course to their name record. And then that would let you send an, a mailing out to everybody with the interest code email the next time you offer this class. The alternate way of doing this would be that if you have a um, contract class, you can have it say, contact Lori Thompson at Aceware if you would like a private session of email mastering your email in Aceware within your institution. And that would be a, like a contract course or a, a, a in-company course. Now, there is help on this. This is a, a bit more detailed. You've got to get a new Aceweb. Uh, you've got to get AceWeb 3.1.06. And again, on the help guide, you need to go look up the word unscheduled. And that will give you uh, uh, the reference of what you need to do inside Student Manager to set this up. Now, I'm going to jump, because we've got a couple minutes, Lori, to the catalog module and kind of show briefly what we're talking about. Catalog codes. Uh, what you need to do is to click the Publish on the Web button here. You would need to create grouping codes 
to say that we want this course to be in this particular group, whether it's scheduled to be offered this term or not. And I think those are the two main things. Uh, well, and then have a subject code, because if this is an open enrollment class and you want uh, to send an email out to everybody who says, send me a notice, they're going to be identified by having the computer interest code. Because as you know, a subject code on the class will tie to an interest code on the name record. Um, so those are the two big things you need to do in manager uh, before you get to the, uh, uh, obviously, the upgrade of Ace Web. I believe, Lori, we have just scooted through this. We are, we're, we're getting faster and faster. Uh, any other questions you could think of right now that are any, that are coming out of the uh, out of the group? Uh, do we have to have everybody out of Student Manager to add the zip lat long and the virtual earth files? You don't. Uh, again, I'm I'm back to the resources page inside Student Manager's uh, web support area. No, you can download those files. Paste them into your student manager while users are in the system. It won't bother them at all. Uh, so yeah, uh, no need to have everybody out to do that. OK. And what version do we need again? Version of student manager. I'm going to bring up the demo. You need to have version 8, 008, or 009, or newer. So again, um, I believe that 008 has been posted. 009 should be posted in a week or so, so that which would put it about the first week of February. All right, how are we doing? Anything else you can think of here? I think that's about it. Our next webinar is coming up on credentials. And again, um, Lori, thank you for a good job of hosting. We just, uh, we've got this done. Uh, folks, remember, uh, the webinars that we have done in the past are always online under the webinar archive. So again, don't forget that as, an, as a good resource. Lori, again, thank you for putting all this together. We'll see you on the 5th. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.